Today I want to talk about or need to talk about Normal People by Sally Rooney. Normal People was a book that I dogged every single page because I felt like there was something important on or something that I wanted to return to and that is rare. You could say very simply that Normal People is a love story, a will they won't they tale and it is a love story but what is so interesting is that that whole will they won't they doesn't just relate to Marianne and Coral, the two characters, the two main characters in this novel. It also relates to the lives that they will choose or the paths that they don't take. These two characters, Marianne and Connell, come from very different economic backgrounds but they are intricately and intimately connected with each other throughout this novel. In lots of ways I could just say that Normal People is one of the most realistic uh, love stories that I've ever read and actually resonated with my understanding of life but it's also this really interesting examination of class and the different types of capital that we have. Marianne comes from a middle class or upper middle class uh, background. Well, she has the economic capital that Connell, who's from a single parent family and his mum works as a cleaner in Marianne's household, he doesn't have economic capital but yet his popularity at school means he has some social capital that Marianne doesn't. As a socialist, I'm always intrigued with how novels deal with class relationships. And this is a tense one and it's a complex one, but it brings up those questions in a different way. It doesn't just sit there and go, Connell's poor, Marianne's rich. The intricacies of class structure are just as complex as they are in real life. The novel begins at school and goes off to university. These uh, claustrophobic environments, I guess, in very different ways. In school, the issue of popularity is brought up a lot with Marianne not being very popular, maybe not having that social capital that Connell does. It highlights the different sides that we show to different people, where we are our true selves and maybe the times we put up a front to be popular or to kind of be in with the cool gang and I'm sure a lot of people, especially if you were slightly bookish at school, almost had to mask certain elements of your geekiness in order to fit in and the novel is about people trying to fit in in different ways and where actually parts of your personality or your true self gets lost in you know doing so. The novel is about the different sides of our personality and who we really are. It's about how much you can really change another person, the impact you make on another person and how we show ourselves to different people and the meaning of that and how do we connect to each other and make these relationships when we're constantly showing different sides to each other. And that's normal, that's natural, we all do it. But I've just never been shown it so beautifully, I don't ever think, in a novel apart from normal people. One note that I made in the novel was basically saying, is popularity the death of true relationships? I don't know, discuss. The whole thing about showing a different side to yourself also comes down to the fact that in this novel, the gaps are almost as important as the communication. For a novel that has these really two highly uh, intelligent characters, there is a lot of lack of communication and there's lots of moments and as a reader, it, fucking kills you um, when you can kind of see them about to say something or see a decision about to be made that would set their lives in a different course of action which as a reader you're kind of hoping it will do and when it doesn't and you see the gap of these two people reeling from this moment that never happened is heartbreaking and it's part of Sally Rooney's pure power in her writing. With Connell going to study literature at university there's a lot of conversation you know about literature and about knowing each other through books and at the same time they are also the same people who are struggling with that communication and if that isn't a coming of age story I don't know what is. Linking to the discussion of books and going to university with the different types of capital that I briefly talked about in the beginning of this video, you really see the different experiences of people from different economic and social backgrounds coming together at university. University in a lot of ways is often seen as a great level, well it's not really, but I think there's a myth that we live in a meritocratic society which I don't personally believe in. You see the difference between Marianne's experiences and Connell's experience and Connell of when he goes to Trinity feeling 
like he doesn't quite fit in. He hasn't been given the key that everybody else has been given to suddenly be able to make sense of this different world. I love the discussion of class and literature and going to university because it's something that resonated with me but also I think you know as a white middle class person when I go to a literary event I don't necessarily realise that I'm surrounded by everybody else who looks like me and probably sounds like me. There are lots of times in the novel and I could just read you a million quotes but when Connell talks about going to a literature festival or engaging in literary discourse and these kind of conversations that when people almost buy a ticket to a literary event they're almost paying their way into a certain level of class. Literature becomes this commodity that then becomes this cultural capital that then opens up the doors and gives you connections later on in life. And already some people have, you know, their foot in the door or they've just pushed the door all like open because they already came with those capitals. Whereas other people may not get them because of how society is structured. I hope this makes sense. I could write a whole essay on class in this novel and I'm aware this YouTube video is not the time to do that. In a lot of ways I feel like this novel is searing, it's probably the completely wrong word, but it has this power and this quiet power. I think conversations with friends were seen as being a bit harsher, a bit harder, it maybe felt a bit rawer, um, and I do feel like friends is a little bit softer, but it's nonetheless equally powerful. There are certain bits in the novel that really horribly resonated with me and I think will resonate with a lot of people. The depictions of violence, the violence against women, domestic violence, um, and not always necessarily physical violence, and the trauma and the impact on relationships. And it's almost like a quiet trauma, it's an undertone that goes throughout their lives. For me personally, Marianne's family really resonated with me. The simmering tension and the undertone of violence or perspective violence. The walking on eggshells hit home for me. The novel's heartbreaking but it also isn't necessarily a sad novel. It's full of moments of first love and hope and seeing which direction your life will go in and the excitement around that but also the waiting, the waiting for your life to begin or to begin in the way that you thought it was going to. The characterisation is fantastic. I think big shout out to Lorraine who is Connell's mom who is probably I think one of my favourite characters in this novel. The whole novel was done so well. The way it moves from the time and you kind of get this almost picture puzzle that comes together in this really amazing beautiful way i am astounded by sally rooney's writing i loved conversations with friends and i thought what a great novel i didn't think that it could be done again in a very different way and i am so excited to see what comes next because i was blown away by both books and that is rare often when i have a favorite writer i might have a couple of favorite books but so far both of these books and for both very different reasons i adore I'm aware that a lot of this won't be new information for you. I'm sure that you have heard loads of people gush about how good Sally Rooney is. And I would love to hear what you think. If you don't really like the novels, I also think that's a great discussion point because I do think these books are seen a bit like Marmite books. You either love one, you hate the other, or you just really don't like Sally Rooney's writing style. And I'm not saying Sally Rooney is a perfect writer at all, because no writer is. You know, there are problematic things that I picked her personally in conversations with friends, especially around conversations around um, privilege. Um, and I've heard, you know, really fair criticisms. Um, they will never make me probably stop loving these novels. The fact that I have dog-eared the pages of pretty much every page of normal people means that there is meat to these novels. I've also started watching the BBC adaptation. I'm only on episode four, but I love it. I think it is so well done and I I'm having to limit myself because I know that I won't be able to work properly, I'll be a broken human at the end of the series. I really could talk about this book all day but I wanted to try and keep my main thoughts quite condensed uh, so I could talk about it in a way that wasn't me completely gushing. But I hope that if you've watched this video and you haven't read Normal People yet, that you give it a go. Especially if it's a novel that you thought maybe it's not really your thing, I can't recommend it enough. If you like this video, please give it a like and it would mean everything to me if you considered subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching and I hope you are safe and well and I will see you again in another video.